All right, welcome everybody. I hope this is a short show today. Short, sharp, shock. Um, I want to answer, um, somebody left a mess, uh, David West left a comment on, uh, one of my videos and, uh, I just wanted to give a quick answer to it because I promised I would. So let's take a look at his comment. He actually asks more than one question, but I've already answered a couple of them. Um, let me just go through them quickly. First, he asks about the Johnny and comma. Uh, he says, he makes a statement here, it lacks Greek uh, manuscript witnesses for about 1,300 years. Um, and I, I've already answered that. That's just not true. Um, we don't have any Greek manuscripts. To, well, we do have man, some Greek manuscripts today that support it. But they, yes, they are late. But um, there were Greek manuscripts that had it. And we can know this. <laughs> they're documented by Erasmus. They're documented uh, even further back. They're docu documented by Cyprian. Uh, back prior to two, uh, you know, the late 200s. So we know, and, 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 but, but anyway, this is a textual criticism. This is a, a question that draws you into the textual critic's way of thinking. And uh, I've just kind of given up on that and kind of arguing from that position. Uh, God has preserved it over time. We know this because we can trace it through church uh, history, through people quoting it all the way back to, again, late 200s AD. So we know it's always been a part of the Bible. And uh, it doesn't matter if I, it doesn't matter if what he says is true. And there are no, even if there were no Greek manuscripts at all that we, that we have today, if there are no Greek manuscripts today that have first John five, seven in there, we can still trust it and know that it's what we've always had. But I wanted to get to his more interesting question. Um, he does ask a question about Acts 1534. So let me just look at that real quick before we go on to the most interesting of the questions. Uh, because I may be missing something on this one. I just didn't really understand kind of what he was on about. Uh, here it says, however, it seemed good to Silas to remain there. Okay. Now this is in, in context. Uh, let me just back up a little bit. Uh, now, Judas and Silas, themselves being prophets, also exhorted and strengthened the brethren with many words. Now, this isn't Judas Iscariot, of course. And after they had stayed there for a time, they went back. Uh, uh, they were set sent back with greetings from the brethren to the apostles. However, it seemed good for Silas to remain there. Now, if Judas and Silas, let me just start off here. If Judas and Silas were sent back, but it seemed good for Silas to remain, then who went back? Judas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the point is, is that it doesn't say that. It doesn't say Judas went back. Uh, his argument is um, that Judas alone departed for Jerusalem is in two 5th century Greek manuscripts. Okay. Now, um, and it's not in the King James Version. So he's saying, you know, why is that not? Why is that? Well, because it's not in the majority of the manuscripts. That's what the majority text was all about. That's what the Texas Receptus took a majority approach. It wasn't what the church had. It was in two small manuscripts. And so it wasn't put in. I mean, I, I'm guessing. I wasn't there. I don't know. But just because it was in two manuscripts doesn't automatically mean it was supposed to be there. Um, and um, let me just say this. If you go to the New American Standard and look at that exact same verse, um, whoops, I'm not there anymore. Acts, what is it? Acts 15.3. Let's take a look at that. No, that's not right. 34, Acts 34. There we go. Acts uh, 1534. Uh, it says early manuscripts do not contain this verse at all. So it's not in the NU at all. Now, I, I do find it interesting that the New King James doesn't have a footnote here. Um, 
Oh, they do. They do have a footnote here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. They do have a footnote here. Good for you. That says um, the NU omit 34. Okay. So, yeah. It's not even in the NU. This verse isn't even in the NU. And, and it, even in its short form, which is, but it seemed good. And neither one has the longer form that he's saying. So it's kind of a mute point. Um, I, I didn't really don't understand the argument. Um, it seemed good for Sauce to remain there. That that ought to, that assumes that um, Judas went back because it was just the two of them and Silas remained. But to add, let me just let me just say this: to add this extra part where it says, um, and Judas alone departed for Jerusalem. Okay. What difference does it make? That's, that's, that is also already clearly stated in here. And if you were to add it, you would simply be, you would simply be re rewording the passage. It may not be a literal translation word for word, but you're still, uh, you're still giving a rendering of that passage that it already, all the meaning already is contained there. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would be more of a, a paraphrase of the passage or a, or an explanation of the passage, it certainly wouldn't be uh, leaving important things out or adding important things in. Okay. It, it, all the information is already there. I don't know that I don't know the details of the decisions to leave it out from the, from the uh, Texas Receptus, but uh, my guess is that it was only in two late manuscripts. So they said, that's okay. We don't, we don't, I want to, it wasn't preserved. It wasn't what had always been in there. So they didn't put it. But now I want to get to the more interesting question. Okay. Um, this one is uh, Mark 15.3. Mark 15.3. Let's look that up there. And we'll look it up over here. Mark 15.3 in the NU. Uh, I'm sorry, the New American Standard. Um, in the right place? Yes. Okay, so it says, then Pachet, uh, wait, let me just back up. This is Jesus on trial, okay? Um, then Pachet asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said to him, it is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, and he answered nothing. Okay? New American Standard. Pontius Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, and he answered him, It is as you say. And the chief priest began to accuse him harshly. And he he did oh, well, he didn't it doesn't say that he answered nothing. And there's no footnote to say that it was left out. That footnote right there says uh, of many things. Accused him harshly of many things. Uh, instead of harshly, accused him of many things, or harshly, whichever. Th that's what that note means. See, or, or of many things. However, because, and the reason why that note's there, by the way, I was looking this up earlier, and that's because the Vaticanus and Synaticus don't agree. <laughs> I did forget which one's which, but I think it was the Vaticanus that had harshly, and the Synaticus had of many things. So they didn't know which one to put, because textual criticism is a flawed philosophy. So they put they picked one and put the other one in the footnote. However, they completely left out the rest of the verse, and Jesus answered nothing. Now, this isn't one of those things that I would probably do a show on if somebody asked me about it, because it really doesn't matter. Um, but somebody asked me, so I'm going to do it. Um, okay, uh, the, the part here that is added... Um, I say, as he, I'm talking like them. The part here that is included in the New King James or in the King James is, but he answered nothing. All right. So his claim is that it's not in any Greek manuscripts. It is only later in the Bishop's Bible. Okay. Okay. Let's go look. Uh, let's go over here to our early church fathers and take a look at... Uh, Mark chapter 15, let's see, right here, chapter 15, there's Mark chapter 15, oh wait, can you see that? No, you can't see that, hold on, 
I'm sorry about that. Um, just turn that off, and let's just turn me off for the for the moment. It's fine. All right, so here we are. Um, we're looking at the early church fathers. We're obviously there's Mark. I'm in Mark. Okay, so you can see. I go down here to Mark 15. Uh, one through five. There's only one reference. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're never going to find this. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Mark. Uh, so we're going to look at volume three. Well, that's that's pretty early. Volume three. That's even early in the Nicene Fathers. I mean, the Anti-Nicene Fathers. Um, so let's look at uh, volume three, page 171. Now, this is Tertullian, who died in like two, what was it, 220? Um, he was, and he was born in one, 155. So he was very early, very early indeed. And, um, so here he is, he's writing an answer to the Jews and look what he writes right here. Uh, this is a quote here, uh, this in quotes right here. This is a quote from a different passage from, I think it's from Isaiah. And then he says, for when Pilate interrogated him, he spake nothing. He spake nothing. So here we have um, Tertullian quoting this passage. But that's not all. That's not all. So now we, we've predated this in the Greek. Okay, we've predated it in the Greek to say that we not, not have the Greek manuscripts today that have that passage in there. But the church has always had that passage. And there were Greek passages where it was in there because there it was quoted by Tertullian. So there, but that's not that's not the end of it. And, and let's look at something else. <laughs> Is that the only evidence to, against this passage? That passage shouldn't be there. Oh no, this passage. Why should this passage be there? Because it must be teaching something wrong. No, it's attested to. It's attested to other places in the Bible. Isaiah 53, 7, it is a prophecy. The he so uh, he opened oops. So he opened not his mouth. Um, and this was uh, and Tertullian put these things together too. He quoted this one and then he said he answered nothing. John 19, 9 says, and went uh, went again into the uh, praetorium, that's the court. Um and said to Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus gave him nothing. Now, that's a little different context, but uh, it's, it still goes with this theory that he answered nothing. And then in Acts 8.32, um, the place in Scripture which he read was this. He was led as a led lamb to, to slaughter, and as the lamb before it sheared was silent, so he opened not his mouth. Now, that's Acts quoting Isaiah. But they're saying that this was fulfilled, and it was fulfilled here in Mark chapter uh, 15 verse 3 how do we know that now this is this this is causing me all kinds of doubt in my bible maybe that passage isn't supposed to be there and this prophecy was never fulfilled read the next verse then pilate asked him again saying do you do you answer nothing now Pilate says, do you answer nothing? Because Jesus didn't answer. If you leave this passage out, we still know that he answered nothing because Pilate says it in the very next verse. So, here you have not only external evidence from Tertullian as early as like 175, 180 AD. You don't know exactly when he wrote the answer to the Jews, but Somewhere early, late 100s, early 200s, we have the fact that Tertullian is quoting a Greek Bible and uh, with the passage in there. So it was in the Greek at one point. We may not have it now, but it was there. Not only that, the church has had this all the way through. Not only that, but it's testified to in the Bible itself as prophecy and fulfillment of prophecy, Isaiah and Acts. Not only that, but the very next verse reifies that Jesus did not answer, making the statement completely true. He answered nothing. But this is the kind of thing that, you know, 
in, in, in an everyday, if there were no modern Bibles and no modern textual criticism, then, and there was a footnote here that said, you know, we don't have any manuscripts that testify to this. Uh, we don't have any manuscripts today that have this verse, that this uh, phrase in them. If it was just a footnote there saying missing, you know, not in modern or not in uh, current Greek manuscripts, which is accurate, not in current Greek manuscripts or, you know, something to that effect, something that's an accurate statement. It wouldn't be a hill of beans because we. It wouldn't be. It's not something that's going to cause a debate in and of itself. You're not going to change your teaching um, of this passage based on the fact that that phrase is not supposed to be there. We know from the very next sentence he answered nothing. And what's interesting was uh, when I was preparing. Uh, and, and kind of researching this, I went and listened to a couple of people preach on this very passage. And uh, um, I like three people preached on this passage, and two of the three I listened to used the King James or New King James, I'm not sure, when they preached. And they included this, and they made a big deal out of it. They made a big deal out of the, out of the phrase, he, he answered nothing. They made no textual comment. None, none of the three made any textual comments at all. But they made a big deal out of he answered nothing. And they made it as sort of, a, you know, an example. And um, uh, it was, you know, they were made some good points. Then I listened to John MacArthur, who, who preached this passage, and I guess he was using the ESV. And his Bible didn't have that phrase. And so um, he made the exact same point, but he made it in verse 4. Um, so, again... Um, God's word is preserved and we can trust it. Um, that's my point. And th the fact that this phrase, but he answered nothing, is not any current manuscripts we have. Or what did he say? Uh, yeah, it's not in any Greek manuscripts that we have today. It's only later in the Bishop's Bible and the Latin Vetus. I don't know what that is. Um, but even a lay person like myself can go look and see that the church fathers had this phrase. And not only that, I can look at the Bible itself uh, and see that this phrase is the fulfillment of a prophecy from Isaiah that was testified as a fulfillment of prophecy in Acts. And there it is right there in Mark. And not only that, even if you took that phrase out, the 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 phrase would still be accurate. Even if the words weren't there, the fact that he answered nothing still is true because we have the next sentence. Do you answer nothing? It's just at that point, you would have to assume he answered nothing instead of knowing he answered nothing. Trust your Bibles. Trust God. He has preserved his word. Buy, read something from the King James family of Bibles. Okay, uh, from the Texas Receptus, from the majority text. I hope this helps. Um, David, I hope I didn't, I don't, I don't come down on you too hard or anything like that. Um, I, maybe you're just trying to learn this stuff like me. Um, now that's fine. Um, I appreciate, uh, appreciate you commenting and watching my videos. So uh, anybody else have any questions, please send them to Pastor Brad uh, at brightstar.church or leave a comment on one of my videos. Thank you, and I hope you have a good week.